Welcome, Michelle, to uh, to Cancer Prevention Day. I am so excited to have you here. And everyone, I'm really thrilled to introduce Michelle Costello to you. Um, she is a friend, a dear friend of one of my clients, and her story is incredibly impactful. And I love the timing of her share because it happens to fall on Cancer Prevention Day, which, as we know, is something that we're focusing on all day long today. Um, Michelle shared her story with me the other day, and it's really incredibly cool how it links with another story that we'll be sharing today from, uh, from Erica Ramos, a genetic counselor, and, and I'll tell you why later on. But one of the things that just impacted me by your story, Michelle, and, and don't worry, I won't ruin it for everyone. I'll let you share it because you do it so beautifully, <laughs> but was the courage um, that she had and continues to have in, uh, in being a previvor. I still see you as a cancer warrior and the steps that you took are, are basically to summarize you being your own advocate. And throughout my cancer journey, um, my wife was in my ear every single day of my treatment going, be your own advocate, be your, you know, you choose the dates that you go to treat, you yep. choose all these things like be your own. So it was really cool when you shared, that was the thing that just jumped out to me from your story was being your own advocate. And I feel like that goes hand in hand with cancer prevention. So I'll shut up Absolutely. and I will let you share and uh, and we'll interject and just have a really great little conversation about this. So Absolutely. You. Thank you for having me um, talk about all this. I think it's, um, it's really an important um, aspect when we think about, you know, we always think about, you know, finding the cure, of course, that is, that's where we want to go. But I, I started looking at things from the perspective of how can I prevent it from happening to begin with, right? I don't, I don't want to go down this path. Um, and so, you know, I, 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 my journey kind of started, I mean, I've, I have a, a, one of my best friends had breast cancer three times. Um, I have an aunt who had breast cancer. And finally, my mom had breast cancer, got diagnosed with breast cancer in 2017. And at the time, I, I asked for genetic testing because I have a, I have a sister, I have a brother, we, you know, we all have kids. I just needed to know, you know, what, what we were dealing with. And um, the doctor at the time said, yeah, you know, I, I wouldn't bother with that. Are you really going to change anything about your life? And so be your old, be your own advocate is really an important aspect, right? You kind of have to be brave enough to say, yeah, I know you have all these degrees and I know you have all of this, but for me, I really want to know. And so, um, so I, I kind of just pushed, got her the test, and turns out she was BRCA2, BRCA2. Um, and so that meant, you know, we had some decisions to make. And um, for me, I decided that knowledge is power. I'd rather know ahead of time and have a game plan for how I was going to attack this, this journey um, rather than have it plopped in my lap um, with no game plan. And so I did get tested and um, I was BRCA2 positive. My sister was not. She she was fortunate enough to not be, but I, I, I was, I am. And so uh, my journey began and I decided, I, I started with a complete hysterectomy um, um, because along with the, the, the breast cancer risk, which is about, I mean, it's a little different for everybody, but my risk was somewhere around the 80, 85% wow. lifetime risk of having breast cancer. Um, and a pretty significant, I think it was around, um, I kind of blocked these things out, but like 60% chance, I think around there of, um, ovarian cancer. And so um, I just, I started with the, uh, with the hysterectomy and, um, uh, you know, had a, had a great uh, oncologist and a great gynecological oncologist that I worked with to just get that taken care of um, while I did all of my research um, to decide what method I wanted to do as far as mastectomy and, and, um, and uh, reconstruction. Um, in the meantime, I was doing um, uh, surveillance, right? And so, so one of the things I think that is really important around being your own advocate is whatever decision you come up with, right? You can decide that you wanna just do surveillance 
you know, for the rest of your life, <laughs> you can do that because it is not a small um, decision. It's not a light decision to make to undergo all of these surgeries. And um, question real quick, Michelle, when you say yeah. surveillance, let's break that down. So surveillance would mean yeah. like we're getting screened every, what is it? What does it look like when you're BRCA positive? Because I, I So not when you're BRCA that. positive, um, I, I mean, obviously we do mammograms. Um, right. but you know, you, you get additional, uh, mammograms per year. Um, inevitably they're going to find something and because of your high risk, um, nature, you're going to end up with an MRI or an ultrasound. I went through two different, um, biopsies, MRI guided biopsies. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I think the difficult part in that is every time you do, you know, you do your, your mammogram, they say, eh, we found something we don't like, let's send it, you know, we need to get you in for an MRI. Cool. You go do the MRI. And as you're waiting for that, like, every single day is like, it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when. And so every time frame in between having the tests, or the 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 biopsy itself, which are not fun. Well, they're you awful. Are, and they're even just the physical aspect of that biopsy. And for everyone that's listening, when you do an MRI biopsy, you are face down. And they literally yeah. put you in kind of a, I don't even know how to describe it, Michelle. And they are sticking needles in you from all vanish So this points. is how I described it, right? You're kind of in like Superman or, one, or yeah. Superwoman pose, right? You're face down. <laughs> and then um, the way they explained it to me is like they have this grid that they put on either side of you. And so that they can see like, okay. And I said, oh, it's like battleship, like A5. And then they go in there and that's where they go in to take the, to take yep. the biopsy, to take the sample. So, um, and, and then that's, really from that. that's just the physical side of it. And then on top of it, and you so eloquently described the emotional side of it and the impact of mm -hmm. waiting. And I can't imagine doing that multiple times a year. So I completely understand where you're coming from. Yeah. But again, some people do choose to do it. And I, I get it. You know, I mean, I think we all have to make our own, our own choices there. I don't think that there's a right or a wrong way. But for me, right, for me, I decided I, I can't do this. I can't do this all the time. So had a really good conversation with my husband. And we just said, you know what, at some point, these surgeries are going to happen. They're going to happen. You know, um, it's just a matter of whether they come before or after chemo, radiation, and any other side effects that happen with that. So we made the decision that, you know what, let's, let's do these surgeries now when I'm healthy and, and I have control over when they happen and how they happen instead of waiting until I have the cancer diagnosis. Um, I, I did... I did come, I think the other thing that I want to make sure people know is, you know, do research, learn about your options, right? Because doctors don't necessarily, um, not every doctor is, is trained or even feels comfortable in every method of reconstruction, mm -hmm. right? There are doctors that are like, you know what, we can do this mastectomy, we can do implants, we can get this in, done you can do it. Um, I started doing research because I just didn't want to do implants. I, I just didn't, I, I was doing this in my mind to reduce risk. And I just didn't want to introduce more risk by having more foreign objects. Um, and I also didn't want to have to think about doing surgery. Um, you know, every eight years or 10 years to take them out and, and replace them. So um, I found um, a, a method of reconstruction called DEEP, D-I-E-P, um, deep flap surgery, um, which uses your own tissue. Um, so happens to be from your abdomen uh, to be able to reconstruct. Um, it is not an easy surgery. Um, I, I ended up finding a doctor, I actually traveled all the way to San Antonio, Texas to find my, my surgeon. Um, it is an eight hour surgery that I was under. Yeah. And, um, and I had to stay, you know, there, my husband and I in like a little like 
Homewood Suites kind of thing. You know, we lived there for about three, three and a half, four weeks before I would be, you know, take the drains out, do all of that. Um, you're in the hospital for about four or five days where I was. Um, and, and the recovery is, it is like battle. I mean, it is a pretty, it's a pretty tough recovery. I don't think I've done anything that hard in my entire life. And I've had two kids and I've done lots of hard things, but that, that recovery was, was pretty, pretty, pretty tough. Um, and, um, I was off work for about two months. Uh, I'm, you know, it was a, a year, October 30th was one year, marked my one year mark. Um, and that's when I started, you know, trying to recover. You know, I, you know, it's kind of like having multiple surgeries, right? Cause you have the abdomen surgery as well as the mastectomy and reconstruction to, to go through. And um, I, I just, you know, some people recover very quickly. It, it did take quite a while for me to, to heal and I, I wasn't able to really work out. I wasn't, and nor was I, you know, motivated, right? I had just, I, I just mentally, um, I wasn't there yet. Um, so I, I reached out to um, one of my favorite um, coaches from, from Orange Theory <laughs> oh. and um, asked her to please help rehab me with the goal of getting back to, um, to Orange Theory. And she's been, God, just such a, such a godsend. She has just really helped me. Um, I think I'm getting close. I'm, I'm getting close to be able to get back in studio and um, I'm starting to feel like myself again. I'm starting to look like myself again. And, um, but it's, it's been quite the journey to get there. And life-changing in the midst of it, right? Yeah. You, you, you know, you're never quite the same. I, I think, um, you know, I, I feel a little bit like Frankenstein's monster, you know, I've got, you know, scars everywhere, you know, um, and, and, you know, they're taking, you know, who knew that they can take tissue from one part of your body and, you know, recreate, you know, another part of your body. I mean, it, it really is, um, it is modern science. It is pretty impressive, um, but it has taken my risk you know, technically my, my risk for breast cancer is lower than the average woman who doesn't have a genetic disposition. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, at the end of the day, I, I, I am, am I glad I did it? Yeah. You know, um, I, I really am glad I did it. I had wonderful, wonderful doctors. I have a wonderful husband that got me through it all and friends and family around me. I know that's not everybody's story, but thank goodness it's mine. Um, and, um, and hopefully, you know, I won't have to get that cancer diagnosis. You know, I, my husband says, yeah, we front loaded the work. <laughs> we got all of it. We did all of it ahead of time. <laughs> with the hope I, of not having to go through it at the end, you know? Well, it's an incredible story. And I think the thing that jumps out at me the most is, is just your amazing amount of courage to take the steps that you took. And Thanks. I know every time I speak to another warrior, such as yourself, I'm, I'm so inspired, but more importantly, I'm so excited to share that story because I know there's somebody out there and that's, that's why I do the work that I do. There's somebody yeah. out there that needs to hear this and not that they need to take the path that you took, but they hear your courage and, and Michelle, that speaks volumes. So thank you so much for sharing with us today. Oh, well, and if you um, wanted to say anything um, in regards to cancer prevention and, and in your story, is there anything you want to share as like a last share to, to people that are listening? You know, I, I really do um, just, you know, kind of where we started our conversation, um, you know, be, be your own advocate. It can be very, very intimidating in there with doctors, with, with all the letters behind their names and all these years of experience, but they don't have experience being you and they're not in your life. So it is important to, to speak up, use your voice. Um, and if you can't bring somebody with you who can, um, you know, I, I think, and, and also to not be afraid of, of the results, right? Don't be afraid of what the, what the genetic tests might tell you. Um, knowledge is power and you can then make some decisions for yourself. So. I, and I can't <laughs> summarize it better myself. Thank you so much, Michelle. <laughs> Thank you again for spending time with us today. 
Um, I, I love your story. I'm so grateful that I had the opportunity to share it. Thank you so much. <laughs>